Howdy, for this one, I'm going to go over some of the modules that I've gone over in the past, but they've had some changes made to them since then, since they've been updated, which has kind of streamlined a couple things, so we're going to kind of update some of these module videos, just so that way people can know exactly what to do now, because things have changed even just since the couple months ago, since I've made them. The first one we're going to go over today is MIDI quality of life, so this this bugger right here. Uh, once, uh, this was pretty much the premier automate your your games and combat to make things a little bit more streamlined module and it still is it works great they've actually made it a little bit better they've made a couple changes to it that makes your life a little bit easier so that's the one that we're going to go over today in this video in addition to that I have some of the other modules that I've had that I talked about in some of my previous videos that I have kind of running in the background with it and let's get started so we'll make sure that's activated and we'll save it and we'll go to our configure settings so we can see exactly what we need to do to make sure everything's set up the right way. So for the first one, uh, it will ask, there's one at the very bottom down here that I like to be able to do. Uh, it says experimental, but it actually works pretty well. So players can control uh, their own hidden tokens. I really like this a lot because I'm going to make a video on it specifically for just doing invisibility with some of the macros and stuff that's already installed in the game to be able to set up so whenever they cast the spell invisibility it makes their token go invisible. I really like it, it works very well and if the players can actually see their character be invisible move around it kind of makes some cool fun stuff because it's like wait where are they going to pop at so it makes for some really fun encounters when they can be able to do that. So now the workflow settings area category has actually been broken up into separate windows so before it used to be just one big long wall of text and it could get really hard to find specific things but so now it's broken up for each individual thing to kind of know to help make your life a little bit easier so for me as a gm i like to auto fast forward attack rolls i don't usually do damage rolls i'll let those i'll actually you know choose the damage that i'm going to do afterwards i don't ever really fudge rolls or anything so i always try to keep everything as you know straight and to the point as I can. So for players, I have the same thing. I have them auto fast forward attack rolls. If they hold alt on the keyboard, that will roll advantage. If they hold control, they roll disadvantage. So, you know, if I say get a situation, it's like, hey, you jumped up on this and I give you advantage on this attack, then it'll just hold alt as they uh, attack. It makes it a little bit uh, more streamlined. And then this little option right here kind of gets rid of, there's a button underneath whenever you attack that'll say like, roll attack or roll damage it'll kind of remove that to kind of make the the chat window a little bit more concise and get less bogged down in addition to that in the workflow settings whenever you're using any kind of spells or spell templates and stuff especially if there's certain situations there's some spells that say it you know gets protected by walls you need to have this checked and I have these two down here that it always makes sure you have the targets selected before you actually attack them so you don't actually attack them when you're not supposed to this one, this macro column use, this actually goes really well with some of the ones, especially with the invisibility one and a couple other little macros and a couple other little modules. This this one's a really good one because it gives you an option at the base of any type of item or spell that allows them to be able to say, all right, this is the macro I want you to touch whenever this is activated. There's also a concentration check that's been applied to mid quality life. I still use the one on the combat utility belt, so I don't use this as often. I always make sure it shows that if the check in it hits, that everyone gets to see the result. I, for saves, I make sure everyone can see the result if someone saves or not. I don't auto fast forward rolls of saves and ability checks. I feel that's something that the players should get to kind of control themselves. So if I have a situation and be like, yo, you're doing this and they don't normally get advantage or they did something that I was like, okay, I, I, could, I could see that or I, I agree with what you did then I'll let them roll advantage or if they did some stupid I'd be like all right you got to roll with disadvantage in addition to that you also want to make sure that this search the spells description that will actually apply some of the effects especially like the half as much damage if you get a save you want that on there so that it actually works and I don't really use let me roll that for you very often but if you do you can set this up to be able to prompt your characters to you know do let me roll that for you and it'll send a prompt and it, it works well, and this is the, the best one right here is the auto applying damage. So, you want it to apply to damage, you want it to apply to damage and to the damage of the card. Also, oh, you want it to bypass any kind of immunities that if they're if someone has you know poison resistance and you hit them with a poison one, you want them to only do the half damage. And then for the physical, so it does any kind of things that it has they take half damage for non magical 
or non-magical physical weapons, it'll automatically apply that effect. And the miscellaneous one, I don't really do much on this one besides the merge merge rolls into one thing. It, it makes them really small and kind of compact. I also do the enable speed rolls that allows them if they hold alt and if they do advantage for alt and then disadvantage for uh, control. And the last one is actually a newer one, which I really like because it's got some really cool fun things in it. So it allows you to be able to, and it, this also does require lib wrappers. So when I first started the video, that was one of the ones that I checked because it is a prerequisite. So it now has, so like incapacitated actors can't make attacks, which just should be obvious. Um, it also will allow hidden actors to be able to roll advantage on attack rolls. So I currently don't have the combat utility belt on this one because I'm not going over that in this video and I can't give it an invisible status uh, because whenever I create the invisible status, I actually apply the effect of being able to roll advantage. So that doesn't really benefit from that as much. So I also, whenever you have someone with invisibility status and they attack, it makes them reappear also requires combat utility belt to, to be able to do that effect. One of the things I do like though is allows the to check the weapon's range before you attack. So if you use a melee weapon and you're trying to attack someone 15 feet away, it's going to say, nope, can't do that because your range of your weapon is only 5. So same thing for ranged weapons. It'll, if you are too close, and it'll automatically apply the disadvantage to a person that's within 5 feet. So that's it, but make sure you save the settings once you do any kind of changes, otherwise none of it will work. So we'll save that. We'll save down here and we'll test some of this out real quick. So these are some characters that I have that are going to be in my new Curse of Strahd campaign that I'm going to start next month. And this is one of the players. I have her on here as well so I can go back and forth so you can see the player's perspective. So for her to kind of walk up and she you know, looks up and she sees that guard over there and she's like, you know what, I'm going to attack him with my, I'm going to attack him with my rapier. Oh, no, but I'm only, I'm 20 feet away, so I can't attack him. So she has to make sure that she is adjacent to him before she can attack him. So when she attacks, it'll automatically roll the attack roll just by using the heads-up display, and it kind of streamlines everything. And then once she gets a hit, you know, then she would apply the normal damage, and it automatically apply the damage to him because I have, I have it so they can at least see what their health is so they can see the change, but they don't see the total. So they, she knows that she did six damage to the guard, so for me, on my end, I can see, you know, any kind of, because this is on my end that they can't see, so it sees exactly how the damage was applied, and if there's any kind of resistances or anything like that, it will show me that if they have a particular resistance. So, for example, if I give this guy resistance to lightning damage, and she hits him, switch back over to her view, and she hits this guy as, as soon as I hit, make her target herself and she hits him she gets a hit she did 11 damage he's dead and then on my end I'll see did I not improve it I guess I didn't oh well uh, but uh, it'll usually it'll show a little especially if they have a resistance to something which I should have uh, obviously put a uh, resistance to piercing damage so you can see the the effect but we'll do it on uh, We'll do it on this one to make sure that she has a non-magic physical perfect. So uh, she's using a regular rapier, so that'll automatically apply the damage. So she'll move up and she'll go and she'll attack the ghost. And when she does that, she got a hit. And so she did a total of 10 damage, but she only took 5 because it automatically applied the resistance to her being immune to it. Ah, oh, that's sorry, I had to hover over it. So a uh, damage immunity is cold and then it shows the calculation. So that's how that works. And say if she is has the invisible status and goes invisible and when the uh, thing's active and she targets, it'll uh, apply the advantage on the attack roll so that, that way she can get that nice little sneaky, sneaky attack but uh, because I don't have it set up the combat utility belt, it won't apply the automatically make her pop back up. So that's the only negative about it. Now, same thing for this guy here. He's got a ranged weapon. So he is now within 30 feet. 
So he's going to attack with his hand crossbow. So he attacked him, did the uh, did two damage. So now when he moves up and attacks him, whoops, click on the wrong guy. So attacks him with his hand crossbow, it automatically applied the disadvantage because he's adjacent to him. Now if he backs up one and attacks his hand crossbow, he just missed because that was a bad roll. So now if he goes further back, he'll automatically roll because he's now further than 30 feet. So it automatically rolled with disadvantage because he's outside of the weapon's range of 30 feet. Now if he moves right back into the bubble, because his, his bubble right now is exactly 30 feet, now if he attacks his hand crossbow, it just attacked normal. And then he did his damage. But that's pretty much it. It, uh, it makes combat very efficient, and especially this doesn't take up a lot of space in the combat window as much as it used to. I am, I am a big, big fan of Mini Quality of Life. This guy who made this module is just an absolute champ, and it has made my game significantly more enjoyable being able to get through it a little bit faster. And I, I've just been, I've been a fan of not letting, you know, of not auto rolling checks and saves because I, I feel like they should be able to get to do that themselves whenever they want to do any kind of skill check. And that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, I'm going to be making several of them today. If you have any questions about anything, you just let me know and I'll be sure to answer you as fast as I can. All right, have a good day.